Um, Stephen, uh, you've been asking for a meeting with the Speaker. You said it was a stitch-up last night. You seem to be on the verge of calling him for Lindsay Hoyle to quit. Have you seen him and what happened? Yes, so I sought out the Speaker this morning uh, and I had a meeting with him just uh, a wee while ago. And I've just followed that up with a statement in the chamber there uh, where I've said that Lindsay Hoyle no longer retains the confidence of SNP MPs to continue in his role. I have grave concerns about the decision that was taken yesterday to turn an, an SNP opposition day into a Labour opposition day. And from my perspective, I have massive, even bigger concerns about the fact that Sir Keir Starmer met with Lindsay Hoyle prior and privately to that decision being made. What did uh, Sir Lindsay Hoyle uh, say to you? You'd said uh, that you wanted uh, a full disclosure about those meetings. He didn't reassure you. What, 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 what did he say to you? I think it would be unfair for me to talk about a private conversation that I've had with Lindsay Hoyle himself. But all I can say, and I think this is an important point, is that my concerns about the stitch-up yesterday remain. The reality is that Lindsay Hoyle met with Sir Keir Starmer and the Labour Chief Whip prior to making a decision which was politically partisan yesterday. To be very clear, the third largest party in Westminster, the SNP, are now formally calling for Sir Lindsay Hoyle to step down as the Speaker. You think his position is untenable? I, I absolutely do think that Lindsay Hoyle's position is untenable. And I wish we weren't in this position. I have a lot of respect for Lindsay. But ultimately, he made a decision yesterday which was politically partisan and he cannot continue in his role as a neutral, neutral chair of the House of Commons. Ultimately, his decision benefited Sir Keir Starmer and there's huge questions to be asked about what was said between Sir Keir Starmer and Lindsay Hoyle that made him change his mind. Did the Speaker not make the point to you that he made in the chamber that he did this in good faith? I presume he apologised to you. He was trying to allow all three parties to vote on amendments in what is a very divisive issue. Can you not give him the benefit of the doubt? So I'm still deeply frustrated about the fact that yesterday descended into farce because we have been speaking for months, months about the need for a ceasefire in Gaza. We finally got to a position where the Labour Party were in agreement with us. Yes, Sir Lindsay Hoyle... You, you got what you wanted. I mean, the, the, the chamber voted for an immediate ceasefire, which is exactly what the SNP wanted. So what's the problem? Because of the fact that, yes, the Labour amendment went through, and I was supportive of that Labour amendment, but our motion, which referred, and this is an important point, to the collective punishment of the Palestinian people, denying them food, water, electricity, medicine, shooting them, bombing them, the collective punishment was not able to be voted upon. And that was a political decision that was taken, and I believe it was taken by the Speaker of the House of Commons following a discussion with Sir Keir Starmer. Was it not taken by the Conservative Party for pulling uh, the votes? Was it not taken by the Conservative Party? There was, you could have had all the three votes, but the Conservative Party decided not to participate. The only reason we were in this mess was because Sir Keir Starmer met with Lindsay Hoyle yesterday. Lindsay Hoyle chose to ignore the rules of Parliament, and as such, the SNP on our own opposition day were denied the ability to vote on whether there's collective punishment of the Palestinians. Steve Fly, I understand how strongly you feel about it. Let, let's go back to the Speaker. You are now formally uh, withdrawing support. Can he stay on? or do you think his position, he has to go? Given that we're the third party in Westminster, we do no longer retain confidence in Lindsay to make decisions which are not political in their nature. I don't believe he can continue in his role. And just finally, um, what do you say to people that say, as I asked you last night, that you are playing politics, that you have tabled this amendment to try and put uh, Labour on the wrong side of this argument over the ceasefire so you can go back to Scotland and tell Scottish voters Labour oppose a ceasefire? That's what you wanted in this opposition day motion and you didn't get it and you throwing your toys out of the pram. What do you say to people that might put that to you? I have been consistent in my view in relation to the collective punishment of the Palestinian people for months. In November, I forced a vote in the House of Commons on this very matter. The First Minister of Scotland, my party leader's family, were trapped in Gaza and experienced this firsthand. I'm actually quite frustrated when people say that I'm playing politics. In actual fact, what we, what we achieved yesterday was we got the Labour Party to shift its position, and I was delighted at that, and I've been celebrating that, so the fact the big, that they... In the big picture, in, in the big there was progress here. In the, in the big picture, there was absolutely prog progress. We had more people agreeing we need to have an immediate just, ceasefire. I, I'm going to get knocked off air in a moment. Just final question. If the majority of MPs do still battle 
Lindsay Hoyle and the Conservatives and Labour don't fall in behind you, he stays, right? Yeah, that's it's, it's up to Parliament to decide. Um, but I think it's import important that Parliament has its say. It's going to be for the government to, to, to determine whether that happens. But my views are clear. OK, Stephen Flynn, thank you so much for talking to us on Sky News.